In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between monoembryonic and polyembryonic mango seeds. So all mango seeds are either monoembryonic or polyembryonic, and both have their advantages and disadvantages. So before we cut these two seed husks open and have a look at what's inside, let's talk about the advantages between the two. So mono and poly, it's exactly what it sounds like. Mono embryonic has one embryo. So the embryo, the embryo inside a monoembryonic seed has come about via fertilization between two trees, and it will be a unique individual. Polyembryonic seeds have, as you can imagine, poly, many embryos. And within this seed husk, this is a Kensington Pride, within this seed husk, there will be multiple embryos. I've heard up to 20, though I've never seen that many. Um, one of those will be from fertilization with another tree, so it'll be a unique individual. But apart from that one, every other embryo inside this seed will be a clone of the mother tree. And so every embryo, except for that one, will be a Kensington Pride. Now this obviously gives advantages. If you want to grow Kensington Prides, if you can wait for, you know, flowering, you don't need flowering that year. You don't need to graft these trees. You can plant seeds from Kensington Pride and you'll grow Kensington Pride mangoes. Polyembryonic, on the other hand, if you grow this seed, it could be anything. It could be really good. It could be the next great thing or it could be trash. So polyembryonic, you know what you're getting. Monoembryonic, you don't. Assuming you choose the clones with the polyembryonic. The other advantage of polyembryonic is if you're looking to grow rootstock. So I use Kensington Pride as rootstock on my property. And so it's really easy to get my rootstock. I plant Kensington Pride seeds. I select the more vigorous seedlings. Now that's not the, the case with all polyembryonic seeds, but it is with Kensington Pride. So if I select the, the more vigorous seedlings, I know I'm getting Kensington Pride rootstock, which performs really well here. Again, monoembryonic, you don't know. The rootstock may perform well, it may not. Now, monoembryonic does have some advantages. As you can see, when I turn these seeds sideways, because there's a higher number of embryos in the polyembryonic seed, the monoembryonic seed is much thinner. And so in a monoembryonic seed fruit, you actually get more flesh. So it's better to have, if you're just looking to eat it, it's better to have a monoembryonic fruit, assuming the fruit's okay. The other advantage is if you're looking to breed new varieties, it's actually really hard to pick which one isn't the clone when you're breeding from polyembryonic seeds. With monoembryonic, every seed is a unique individual and so you can easily plant individuals and find the new best seedlings to, you know, go on and become new varieties. A bit harder with polyembryonic seeds. To know which one's which, you're just going to have to look it up. Uh, you can't always predict exactly whether a cultivar is going to be monoembryonic or polyembryonic based on how it tastes or where it's from. But in general, Asian cultivars tend to be polyembryonic. So some of the more common ones other than Kensington Pride, you know, Namdok Mai, PPK, they're all polyembryonic. And monoembryonic cultivars tend to be from India. Um, so some of the cultivars originating there, like the famous Alfonso or the more common Glen or Palmer, those sorts of mangoes that have developed in America from Indian background, they tend to be monoembryonic mangoes. Now through the magic of YouTube, and because I forgot to press record, we've skipped straight to where we have the embryos out of their husks. If you've never done this before, basically what I do is I clip around the edges with my secateurs until I can just pull apart the husks and remove the embryos. I often do this anytime I propagate mangoes because it makes them propagate or makes them germinate much faster. So then you just go and plant the embryo in the soil and it'll grow your mango. Worthwhile skill to know. Now, here we have our mono embryonic seed. As you can see, one embryo as expected. It's quite a large embryo and it'll give quite a vigorous seedling because it's got lots of energy to get started. Our Kensington Pride embryo on the other hand is polyembryonic and as you can see we've got one, two, three, four, 
five embryos all in one six one at the back okay they're all separate embryos and so let's say there's six i'm probably missing some but five out of those six will be clones and one will be the actual fertilized seedling between two two trees that actually occurred via fertilization so it'll be a unique individual whereas five will be a clone and so if I, if i plant this many of these won't germinate because they don't have enough energy you can see some are quite small I'll probably get three, possibly four seedlings germinate. And if you're going to go and then pick the one or two most vigorous of those, you can actually separate those out and grow them and be fairly sure that they're Kensington Pride. Now with Kensington Pride, the fertilized seedling is usually the least vigorous. And so if you're selecting the most vigorous, you can be fairly sure you're selecting for the clones. This isn't the case with all polyembryonic mangoes it's it's a kensington pride thing um, so don't don't expect that same result with all mangoes but if you're using kensington pride particularly if you're using it as a rootstock it's very handy to be able to select those rootstocks out very quickly grow them on and then graft onto them with whatever cultivars you're you're growing on them I hope you enjoyed this brief look at the differences between monoembryonic and polyembryonic mango seeds if you did find this informative, please give it a thumbs up if you found it useful. And if you're into this kind of thing, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.